Columbia Broadcasting System presents a new comedy. My Friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane, with John Brown as Al and Life Erickson as Richard. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forgotten, theirs will still be hot. anywhere in life without friends. And I believe that. That's why I live with my friend Irma. She's a sweet girl, and I love her. I love her very much, but she's, um... Uh, well, as a famous philosopher once said, those who thirst for knowledge always get it. My friend Irma's been on the wagon for years. <laughs> believe me, it's the truth. Like the time she was preparing dinner, and I said... Irma, honey, why are you putting both of those cabbages in the stew? And Irma said... You know the old saying, Jane, two heads are better than one. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this should give you a rough idea of one of Irma's rough ideas. And it's little things like that which have made me what I am today. Practically a nervous wreck. It's got to stop. So I resolve that nothing Irma can say or do today will get me riled. Because Sunday is my birthday. (laughs) And so today, I'm just going to relax. I am in complete control of my emotions. And I was pretty proud of myself because this morning, she started tampering with me earlier than usual by greeting me with, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jane Stacy. Happy birthday to you. Well... Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. It's a nice thought. Except for one small detail. What? Today does not happen to be my birthday. Oh, Jane. You just don't want to tell me how old you are. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jane Stacy. Happy birthday. Are you finished? Not yet. To you. <laughs> Irma, today is Friday. It is not my birthday. Now, look at the calendar, honey. If you don't believe me, my birthday comes on Sunday. I don't have to look at calendars. I have an instinct in these matters. Irma, what do you think a calendar's for? Well, to tell you to drink, buy insurance, and how for a dollar down you can get buried beautifully. (laughs) Well, honey, I again repeat, today is not my birthday. So if you don't trust me and you don't trust the calendar, trust Al. He gave it to us. I refuse to look at it. Why? Jane, you know the old saying, curiosity once killed a groundhog. (laughs) Irma, curiosity killed a cat. Gosh, it's getting to be a regular epidemic. (laughs) But anyway, cat or no cat, happy birthday to you. Stop, stop, stop. I'll agree to accept my birthday ahead of schedule if you'll just stop singing. Now, that's more like it, Jane. And since it's your birthday, let me compliment you on how well-preserved you are for 42. (laughs) 42? How'd you reach that figure? Well, life begins at 40, and when you met Richard, you said life was just beginning for you, and since you've been working for him for two years, that makes you 42. (laughs) Irma, uh, let me ask you something though I really care. Why are you so intent on giving me a birthday today when Sunday really is? What's the point? Well, today must be your birthday. Otherwise, why would you get a telegram? Everybody knows you only get telegrams on your birthday. To Irma, a telegram means a birthday. I don't know how long I can restrain myself and keep from yelling at her, but I am not going to break my promise. I'm going to save up all my yells. And tonight, when it's dark, I'm going up on the roof and for a full hour crouch there and bay at the moon. (laughs) Irma, would it be asking too much for you to let me read my own telegram? Well, I'll give it to you tonight when you blow out the candles on the cake I'm going to bake for you. Honey, listen, it might be important. I'd like to see the telegram now. All right, Jane, but I don't see why you should be so impeccable. 
<laughs> Impeccable. Uh huh. Now, <laughs> where did you put the telegram? Now let me see. Uh, well, when the messenger gave it to me, I put it in my right hand. Then when I signed it, I put it in my left hand. Then when I was washing the dishes, I put it in my mouth, and then I ate... Irma, you didn't. Oh, don't be silly, Jane. I wouldn't do that. I'm on a diet. <laughs> Irma, where is the telegram? Where is it? Think, think, think. Thanks, Jane. I got it. It's on the sink. Oh, no. On top of all my troubles, you're developing a lisp. Here it is, Jane. I'll read it to you. No, thanks, honey. I'll read it. Happy birthday to you, signed Father. Irma, this is going too far. I think it was sweet of him. Irma, my father did not send me this telegram, but I know who did. You. And you signed it, Father. Jane, don't be silly. How could I be a father? I'm not even married yet. <laughs> listen to me, Irma. Now listen to me. I, I made a resolution that I would not let you make me angry today, but I don't know if I can keep it, and I'll tell you why. To start with, you sold me a birthday earlier than it really is. You are now trying to make me believe this telegram came from my father, but you won't stop there. No, no, not you. You're going to arrange a surprise party for me, I'll bet you. <laughs> You'll invite Al, Richard, and the neighbors. I, I can't stop you, but I want to tell you one thing. When you finish planning everything, just remember this. I will not be present at a birthday party which is not on my birthday. Now, what do you say to that? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And, Al, I feel badly. I meant to call you and tell you to bring Jane a present because today's her birthday. Oh, now, don't feel badly, chicken. Even if you had reached me, I couldn't have afforded a present because my new deal just fell through. Oh. <laughs> Oh, honey, that's all right, Al. I'll bake her a cake tonight, and I'll say it came from both of us. It'll be my own special recipe. It's a three-layer cake. The first layer is cake, and the second layer is icing, and the third layer is wax. Chicken, what's the wax for? Well, it's a lot quicker than waiting for the candles to melt down. <laughs> hi, Al. Oh, hi, Jane. Gee, I'm sorry I didn't bring you a present, but I would like to wish Don't you... Don't say it, Al. I've been through a lot today. You see, Irma thinks it's my birthday, and it's not until Sunday, so look. Al, will you do me a favor and straighten her out? You know, after all, you're going to marry her someday, and I think it's time you sat down and had a little talk with her. You mean like a man-to-man -man talk? Any kind of talk. You know what I mean, Al? Yeah, I got you, Jane. Hey, will you come over in the corner a minute, chicken, and I'll try to straighten you out. You know, chicken, there comes a time... Thanks, Al. You've helped me a lot. <laughs> But, honey, I haven't said anything yet. I like it better that way. It's easier to remember. <laughs> Look, Irma, someday you and I plan to go up to a man, and he'll make us one. Oh, I like that, Al, because then we'll never fight. Why? Because it takes two to start an argument. <laughs> you see what I mean? Chicken, with your permission, I'd like to call this whole thing off. Oh, but I just love having these intellectual discussions with you. Uh, but now getting back to Jane's surprise party, which I'm arranging for tonight... But, Chicken, Jane says it's not her birthday. Oh, but, Al, she gave me the idea for the party. I remember her exact words. She said, go on, your type will arrange a surprise party for me. See? Well, Al, did you straighten her mouth? Uh-huh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. That's how we stand as of now. Irma and I met, and I'm losing every round. She's got me on the ropes, and now she's preparing to deal the knockout blow because Richard has just entered the room, and Irma is waiting to greet him with... Hello, Richard. You're just in time. Hello, girls. Al? Hey, what are you doing here? Having a party? You see, even Richard knows. Knows what? Irma means that you know that today is my birthday, and pretty soon she's going to ask you... Why didn't you bring Jane a present? And you're going to be embarrassed and say... Well, I didn't know it was her birthday. And Al's going to say... Irma's right. And I'm going to say... Th I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I 
promised myself I would not get angry. Say, what's this all about? Uh, can I see you a minute, Richard? Richard, far be it from me to say anything, but Jane's losing her memory and doesn't even know that today is her birthday. Really? Yes, so you'll have to handle it. Uh, well, certainly I will, what surely. What are you two mumbling about over there? What's Irma been telling you, Richard? You certainly don't believe her fantastic story about today being my birthday, do you? Oh, no, Jane, but uh, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. <laughs> Well, while Irma was in the kitchen doing I don't know what, I had the opportunity to be with Al and Richard alone and try and straighten out the situation. I was saying, you see, kids, today is not my birthday. But when Irma gets an idea in her head, there's nothing you can do to stop it. it has so much room to run around in. <laughs> So what do you say we all go out to dinner, huh? Forget the whole thing. I heard everything. They think I'm half-baked, and I know they're not talking about the cake. <laughs> oh, I'm only trying to do the right thing and celebrate Jane's birthday, but they're all against me. But I know what I'm doing every second of the time, and sometimes even oftener. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll just lie down here like I fell and take this empty pot and crack it against the sink and they'll think it's my head. Okay, here goes. Oh! Oh! They got me! Irma! <laughs> Irma, what did you drop? Oh! Richard! Al, come here quick! Oh. Irma's hurt herself. Come and give me a hand. Here, take it easy. Put her on the oh. couch. She can open up your Honey. eyes. Speak to me. This is Al. You're Al. Jane. Jane, I think she's unconscious. Oh, really, Richard? Are you sure? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, heavens, we got to make sure. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll get Dr. Miller to come upstairs. Merwin! Merwin Miller! Yeah? Will you drop that cap and tell your father to come up here right away? <laughs> What's the matter? Somebody hurt? Yes. Irma fell down. She's unconscious. On her? How can you tell? <laughs> you go and get your father and tell him to get up here right away. What do you need him for? Save money. Take me. I'm just a gun. <laughs> Merwin, go get your father, the doctor. All right. I'll get him. I don't know. I can't understand it. They're always asking for my old man instead of me. Just because he's got a license. <laughs> hey, Pa! Go up to apartment 3B. The Peterson girl's laid out like a dog. <laughs> if she was laid out like a cat, I wouldn't need you. I'd treat her myself. <laughs> well, Dr. Miller finally arrived, and we all stood around breathlessly for his diagnosis, and finally he said... Well, Jane, I don't think there's anything to be alarmed about. There were no apparent bruises, so the worst it could be would be a slight concussion. Concussion of what? It's hard to say we've got so little to go on. <laughs> And now it's the Sportsman Quartet with Lud Gluskin and his orchestra and their novel arrangement of Sipping Cider. Sip, sip, sipping cider. Sip, sip, sipping. Sip, sip, sipping cider. Sip, sip, sipping. The sweetest gal I ever saw was selling cider in a grocery store at half past six when the sun was set. I used to go to see my pet. She'd pull the shade and shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. We'd get some cider and a big, long straw. Sipping cider through a straw. We sat there for hours or more. I sip first and she sip last. What? We dip the most because we dip so fast. We sip till our straw did slip. And I sip cider from her lip. That's how I won my mother-in-law. Sip, sip, sipping cider. Sipping. Sip, sip, sipping cider. Sipping. When first I saw her with a straw, said I to her, Say, are you sipping something? Yes, I'm sipping cider. It's all the go. She was as so sweet as sweet can be. Sweet can be, sweet can be. But sipping of the cider was the end of me. Sipping cider through a straw. We sat there for hours and hours. 
fourth. I dip first and he dip last. Well, please dip the most because he dips so fast. We dip till our straw did slip and then I dip the cider from her lips. That's how I won my mother-in-law. Dip, dip, dip. Dr. Miller was in there in eternity examining poor Irma. Poor little Irma who never thought of anything bad. I felt so helpless that anything like this should happen to Irma. She's such a sweet kid, so understanding and so helpless herself. Gee, it's so hard to stand by and see her lying there like a frightened cocker spaniel. (laughs) Well, finally, Dr. Miller came out and I said, Doctor, how is Irma? Tell me, is there anything serious? No, Jane, she fell down. But there's no sign of any injury, so I don't think we've anything to worry about. Oh, I can't accept that, Doctor. Irma means too much to me. You see, you see, I feel a great responsibility for her, and when I think of that poor kid lying there in pain, I... Well, what can we do? There must be something. Why do people always say there must be something? I could ease your mind by taking a lot of x-rays, but I don't think the expense is warranted. She may have a slight concussion, so the only thing to do is not to excite her. Make her comfortable, humor her. Give her everything she wants, and let nature do the rest. Hello, son. See, Miss Stacy, you wouldn't call me. I would have told you the same thing for half price. Haven't lost the cat in four years. (laughs) Come on, Merwin. Okay, Pop. By the way, Merwin... Why did you open my can of ether? Mama couldn't sleep last night. (laughs) It's working. Now they're all going to wait on me. I feel like queen for a day. (sighs) Now I'll go a step farther and make them believe I'm crazy by pretending I'm smart. (laughs) Jane! Jane! Yes, darling, yes. What is it? Can I do anything for you? Is there anything you want? Anything at all? Now, don't get upset. What can I get for you? What? I'd like to read a little. Oh, sure, honey. I'm sorry I didn't think of it first. The little strength you had, you had to ask me. Never forgive myself. Here, darling. Here are your favorite books. Here's your giant comics. (laughs) Here's your Superman and Dick Tracy. If you want to idle away your time, here's your crayon book. Jane, I don't want to read those books. I want to read the Encyclopedia Britannica. Richard, she's delirious. Remember what the doctor said. You humor her. Irma, darling, maybe I misunderstood you. I'll, I'll bend over so you can whisper it in my ear. Now, you save your strength, honey. Did you say the Encyclopedia Britannica? Yes, but tear the appendix out, Jane. <laughs> Why? In my condition, I want a healthy book. <laughs> The crisis is past. She's sounding like the old Irma. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, I don't think so, and I'm scared. Irma would never ask for the Encyclopedia Britannica. I didn't even know she could pronounce it. <laughs> I'm really frightened about all this, Richard. Well, now, wait a minute, Jane. Don't be upset. Well, I'll try something else. Irma, honey, listen. Shall I put on your Spike Jones record? Well, thank you, Jane, but maybe we'd all like to listen to the Philharmonic. That did it. Richard, Irma has never been sicker in her life Oh, now, Jane, now, just, just relax, Jane I'm not sure, but possibly the shock has brought on a hidden intellect That we never thought Irma possessed Well, if it has, it's weird It's... It's unnatural And I don't want any part of it for Irma I love her the way she was Simple and... Uh, well, you know, the way Irma was Chicken, this is Al, you Al Please snap out of it If you do, I'll do anything I'll... I'll even get myself a job. There, I said the word. (laughs) And I feel tired already. (laughs) But I'll do it. Uh, Just during your convalescent period, of course. Oh, Richard, I can't stand it. I want the old Irma back, and I want the old Al back, who doesn't work. These changes are coming too fast for me. I'm not a well woman. I think we need somebody else to consult with besides Dr. Miller. I don't agree with you. I tell you, this kid Merwin is nothing. I'm not thinking of Merwin. You better not. The kid ain't even got a license. Oh, Al, will you stay out of this? Heaven 
goodness sakes. Richard, what do you suggest? Well, well, I've got an idea. I'll get our family physician, Dr. St. Clair Howard. He's the head of the staff of one of our biggest hospitals here in New York, and as a favor to me, why, I'm sure he'd come right over and talk to Irma. Oh, that's wonderful. Call him right away, Richard. Oh, stop. Uh, we don't need a doctor. My mind has just snapped back to normal. No, darling, now, now, don't excite yourself. You just go along with me, huh? Janie knows what's best for you. But, Jane, I don't need a doctor. Well, I know you don't, dear, but it, it's, it's a whim of Janie's. You, you know, do it for me because uh, I give up. Today's my birthday. So there we were. Three people and Irma, waiting for Dr. Howard's arrival. Suddenly, I heard footsteps coming down the hall, and I said, Oh, thank goodness the doctor's arrived, Richard. The door opened, and in came... What happened? What is this about Irma? Oh. <laughs> Hello, Professor Kropotkin. Janie, what have they done to her? What terrible, tragic thing has happened to my little pigs? On... <laughs> well, you, you see, Professor, Irma fell down and hit her head on the floor. This I know, but how did she hurt herself? <laughs> Nobody seems to know. Dr. Miller thinks she might have a slight concussion as a result of the fall, but we're not taking any chances. We're calling in a specialist to treat her. What for a specialist? I, Kropotkin, will treat little Irma myself with my own private remedy, which never fails. That's very nice of you, Professor Kropotkin, but, but I think we'd better wait for Dr. Howard. For what? To treat that little girl? To me, this is fascinatingly simple. <laughs> What is wrong with Irma can be cured with one treatment. T. T E T. <laughs> what a beautiful word. Cures everything. Well, Professor Kropotkin, we appreciate your help, but T is not the remedy for Irma. Jane, you don't seem to realize that a glass of tea is symbolic of the whole universe. First, the tea leaves on the bottom of the glass. That's the earth. Then the water, that's like the air over it. And floating on top, the lemon. That's the sun. <laughs> now, put in a dash of vodka, thunder, lightning, earthquake. Well, we appreciate what you're trying to do, Professor, but stop, honestly... Stop, You got no confidence? Kropotkin does not push. I'll bring the tea myself. Because <laughs> already from this argument, I'm sick. <laughs> Gee, that was nice of Professor Kropotkin, but I think he's barking up the wrong tea. <laughs> I'm a tree toddler. <laughs> well, you just take it easy, honey. The doctor will be here soon. How are you feeling now, dear? Well, I'd feel much better if you didn't send for the doctor. Oh, well, don't worry. I bet you the doctor will tell us that there's nothing wrong with our little Irma, huh? Won't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jane, what if they found out I was faking? I, I might be, you know. Ah, you're sweet. You just don't want to worry me, do you? No, but I'm a little worried myself. There, that must be the doctor. And soon we'll know everything, won't we? Yeah, everything. Come in. Hello? Is this apartment 3B? Oh, yes, yes. Hello, Dr. Howard. I'm so glad you've come. Uh, may I present uh, Jane Stacy? Hello. How do you do? And this is Al... Uh, Al... You know, I don't know your last name, Al. Nobody does. Just call me Al. <laughs> and, uh, doctor, this is the patient, Irma. Oh, so this is the patient. How are we feeling? Well, I don't know about you, but I feel fine. <laughs> so we fell down on our heads, did we? Do you hear anything ringing? Of course not. But uh, would you mind answering the phone? Irma. <laughs> Irma, the phone isn't ringing. Well, no wonder I already answered it. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Please, please, uh, we're getting along fine. Now, Irma... Has the ringing stopped? Yes. That's fine. Now somebody's knocking at the door. <laughs> this is frightening. Will you all leave me alone with her? I think I know what the trouble is. Miss 
Stacy. Oh, doctor. Doctor, how is she? Miss Stacy, I'm going to be very honest. Don't spare me. I can take it. First, before I tell you, here's a prescription which contains a minor sedative to settle her nerves. Well, what's the real trouble, doctor? What's wrong with Irma? I think your friend Irma is malingering. Malingering? <laughs> Translated into the layman's language, Irma is faking. Well, that's impossible. But it's true, and that's my analysis. Richard, did you hear what he said? I can't believe it. Are you sure, Dr. Howard? Positive. But if you want consultation, I don't mind. In fact, I suggest that you call Dr. Miller. He's one of the best in his line. And I believe he lives in the neighborhood. Oh, we had him and his kid, and they didn't do any good. <laughs> anyway, that's my opinion, and I'd stake my medical reputation on it. This girl is faking. I knew it the minute I talked to her. They never fool me. Well, goodbye, and by the way... Happy birthday to you, Miss Stacy. <laughs> Irma, you heard what Dr. Howard said. Are you faking? Answer me yes or no. Yes or no. <laughs> What's the idea of giving me two answers? Well, give me another question and we'll be even. Irma Peterson, I see it all We've just been taken in by you You're driving us all crazy Why? Well, because today is your birthday And I wanted to keep you here for your party Oh, are you still on that birthday? Today is Friday My birthday comes on Sunday Look at the calendar It says May 2nd is Sunday Jane, today is May 2nd What? Well, I, uh, look, look at the calendar. It says Sunday is May 2nd. Oh, I forgot to tell you something about that calendar. It happens to be next year's calendar. <laughs> well, what good is that, Al? Well, look, Jane, is it a crime to be ahead of your time? <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Jane. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. I'm sorry, honey, and I apologize. I see now. You only, you only wanted to be nice and give me a party. I really don't deserve it. Yes, you do, Jane. And it's not too late to celebrate. Come on, we'll all go down to the Ritz and have a wonderful party. Oh, I'm all for it. I never felt better in my life. <laughs> Irma! 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 Oh. Merwin, get your father. Something's just happened to my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma was written and directed by Cy Howard. Things move fast these days. Weeks become months and months become years almost before you realize it. Ten years from today isn't really very far away, and the savings bonds you buy now will reach their payment date before you know it. For every $3 you put into bonds today, four will be there when the bonds mature in ten years. It's the safest investment in the world. Maybe you're buying bonds through your bank or post office. Maybe you're buying them through the payroll savings plan where you work. Either way, they're the same bonds. The same high rate of interest prevails. The same bright promise for tomorrow is yours with every bond you purchase. Remember, time flies. That future you've always dreamed about and planned for will be here sooner than you think. Get ready to enjoy it. Make sure it's all you want it to be. Protect that future by buying savings bonds today. <laughs> Remember, next week, instead of dialing your telephone to listen to your best friend, dial your radio to this same Columbia station, same time to listen to... My Friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane, with John Brown as Al and Life Erickson as Richard. This is PBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 